So we're trying to uncomplicate Christmas in this series. And one of the complications that gets in the way and confuses everything and distorts is assumptions. For example, when it comes to assumptions, we think we know how the nativity story is. We've been told it for centuries. We have nativity scenes. We have plays at church. We have movies. We have everything that describes what the nativity scene looks like. However, we make some assumptions that are wrong and then we bury them deep inside and it does change the story. For example, it's assumed that Mary rode on a donkey. Nowhere is that written. I mean, you would think they'd have some kind of animal that would help them, but that's really just tradition. That's opinion that's passed on through the centuries that there was a, a hotel with an innkeeper. See the real language there and the way the culture was in the Middle East, they didn't have holiday expresses. So there was no hotel. What it says is, is a shelter. And so most houses would have a guest room and then the main room where everybody slept and spent time. For example, in Mongolia, we went out into the wilderness and we went to one of their gares, which are like big round tents. Everything happens in that space. They don't even have guest rooms. I, we were guests. We just slept with everybody else cooking, everything happened in that space. And so in a traditional Palestine, Middle Eastern community, they had a guest room because hospitality was such a big deal. That is the same word that is used for shelter. And so since there was a census going on, that means that everybody that was, had their heritage from Bethlehem came back. And to say that there was no room for them Joseph was from the lineage of King David. He was a royal. The history of a people is passed along. And so when he comes into town, everybody's going to know who he is. One, because the town is small. And two, because he's royalty. This is common sense for any culture, but especially for a culture that is so ingrained and enmeshed in hospitality. There is no way there's not going to be room at somebody's place for a pregnant teenage girl as she's about to give birth. What really happened from the archeology span and anthropology that we know of this period of time, they had a room that they stayed in at night to keep the animals safe and warm and not stolen. They'd put them in this space, but guaranteed for that night, there were no animals brought in there. There's no way the wife would allow that to happen. And yet, if you get a quiz on which animals were there at the birth, we don't know of any. The Magi, one, they didn't come for quite a bit later. And how many were there? Everybody says three. Why? It doesn't say. In fact, the reason Harry was probably freaked out was because there was this huge, it said they, they would usually historically travel in big packs. That's a little scary when a big pack of people from the East come and say, we're here to meet the King of the Jews. He was born. So this idea, these assumptions that we make, we have to ask the question, who says? And the same is true of, of how we view ourselves. This season can bring up a lot of stuff where we, you know, say to ourselves, um, my walk is not where it should be. I'm not worthy. I'm not into this faith stuff. I'm not enough. I've disqualified myself. I'm too normal to be used by God. And so we make all of these assumptions. And when we make all of these assumptions, we're, we're, we're complicating things and we're closing doors. And so for this Sunday at Branches, we're going to not go through all the details of the nativity birth, but talk about how these assumptions, not just about the birth, but about ourselves and about this world and about who God is, and realize that complicates things because it's really much simpler when we can see clearly. John said, the light has come into the world. It has overcome the darkness. And so as we step back and we try to see things clearly, we're going to experience what Jesus said would happen. You shall know the truth, not just in the nativity scene, but in all things as you seek him. Listen to him. You shall know the truth. 
and the truth will set you free. That's what it looks like to uncomplicate things, to be free because you know the truth. Hope to see you on Sunday.